I've been vaguely aware of LaShawn Thomas for a while now, though I've probably been aware of his actual work for longer thanks to Boondocks memes. The earliest I can remember actually knowing about him was when I saw the Cannon Busters opening for the first time around, I don't know, uh, last year. I thought it slapped and looked a bit more into the series and its creation, discovering LaShawn in the process and the work he'd done in animation, working on many a classic show before moving to Korea and making a name of himself in Studio Mir, afterwards going on to work on shows like The Legend of Korra and Black Dynamite, as well as creating and developing his own like the aforementioned Cannon Busters and Children of Ether. I found his story an inspiring one, especially as a young black person with dreams of going down a similar creative path myself. I then promptly forgot about him and his stuff. Um, look, I, I was very busy. I, I promise I'll watch Cannon Busters eventually. But earlier this year, I was once again reminded of LaShawn when I heard of his latest project, an anime based on the historical black samurai, Yasuke. Animated at Studio Mapper, who in recent years have become known for works like the final season of Attack on Titan, Jujutsu Kaisen, and the upcoming Chainsaw Man. Featuring music done by experimental and electronic producer Flying Lotus, and starring actor Lakeith Stanfield, this certainly had all the makings of, at the very least, a decent spectacle. And hey, I'm always happy to support black creators in this industry, especially since I have a vested interest in it. Seriously, Netflix, talk to me. I've got big ideas. We can set up a meeting or something. Just let And so I kept up to date enough just to know when it was coming out, and also that apparently it was going to have some fantastical elements. And when the 29th of April rolled around, I was there to watch the first episode, binging all six over the course of about three days. And, well... It certainly was a decent spectacle. I'll give it that. Look, I think there's a lot to like about Yasuke. The voice acting is generally good, I think the Keith Stanfield was cast nicely, the action and general animation style is nice, though the fact that it was made in a borderline sweatshop makes it a little hard to enjoy it. But the crown jewel has to be Flying Lotus's soundtrack, whose mix of Japanese and African percussion, Blade Runner-esque synths, lo-fi and hip-hop was so good it turned me into an overnight simp. And with guest vocal performances from Thundercat, Nicky Randa, Denzel Curry, just... God, like... Just go listen to it now. Even if you haven't seen the show, I don't care, it doesn't matter. Give this king some love. These are all surface level things, however, and unfortunately, it's where it counts that Yasuke is less successful. Before we keep going, I'd like to plug my Patreon a bit. Every time I make a video, I'll have a director's commentary up within a week for tier two, just going over my creative process and the stages of making the video. You also get a credit and or a shout out at the end of every video, depending on the tier you sub at. I've linked it in the description below. On paper at least, the plot and story beats of Yasuke are fine, I think. An African slave, brought to Japan and taken in by an ambitious warlord with dreams of unification. Over the years, he slowly integrates with the community, but always remains an outsider, especially to the older generation. Still, he stays, through discrimination and tragedy, until he finds himself on the losing side for a change, forced to part ways with the man who gave him a chance. Years later, racked with guilt, he finds an opportunity for redemption in escorting a young girl, Saki, to a doctor to honor her mother's dying wish, finding out more about her and himself in the process. Also, there's magic and giant robots, one of whom is self-aware and constantly making one-liners. Teamwork makes the dream a slightly greater statistical probability. Someone really ought to rewire those circuits for you. Now, I don't think it was necessarily wrong for them to add science fantasy elements into the story. When it comes down to it, we really don't know all that much about the real world Yasuke, so a standard biopic was always going to be a challenge, and if you're going to have to make up your own original content, fuck it, why not go all the way? I don't even really mind them hand-waving their origin. Why are there robots in 16th century feudal Japan? I... I... The, 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 the Mongols brought them. Alright, where did the Mongols get them? Spice? Spice? Not important. 
The problem is not much really happens with this concept. Like, okay, magic is whatever, I can buy that not really impacting much, assuming it's kept all rare and mystical and whatnot, but fucking robots? Like, come on, there had to have been something. Are you telling me that a forward-thinking revolutionary like Nobunaga didn't rip one of these things open and think, hell yeah, I'm about to invent some TV up in here? Like, could you imagine if they leaned into the science fiction aspect more? We could have had Yasuke running around slicing people up with a lightsaber in cyberpunk feudal Japan. In space. This problem of not really going into detail is the one thing I think is really holding Yasuke back. Its story, themes, and characters just aren't fleshed out that well. The pieces are there though, and there are moments where they fall into place, most noticeably when the show focuses on Yasuke's past in Nobunaga's court. But once those stop becoming a focus, it's hard to become invested in Yasuke's story, especially since the man himself, while having the backstory, the looks, and the voice, is unfortunately a little bit dull, and most of the side characters aren't really strong enough to make up for it, at least those in the present. There are a few cool ones. Most of the people in the past storyline are compelling enough, the shaman is pretty entertaining, and so is Abraham the Priest, who kind of reminds me of a budget version of the Bishop of Greshit from Castlevania. When he was introduced, I was under the impression that he would be the main antagonist for the season, or at least stick around for a while, so I was both surprised and a little disappointed when he dies at the end of episode 3, only to be replaced by a less compelling villain who gets even less screen time than he did. And I think that's emblematic of the main issue with Yasuke. With only six 30-minute episodes, it just doesn't have enough time to tell everything at once in a satisfying manner. Which, more often than not, comes at the cost of the characters, whose development and relationships aren't nearly fleshed out enough. The most egregious example of this by far is with the group of mercenaries that Abraham hires to capture Yasuke. After he dies, they end up returning for the final battle to aid Yasuke in his fight against the evil Daimyo, and they try and force this weird friendship thing with the aforementioned self-aware robot and a woman also in the team. Like, it shows up out of nowhere. They do the whole robot discovering friendship for the first time. He's human deep down. And then she dies. And then he dies. And then I die because I'm like... What was the point of that? Look, I can just sit here all day and pick apart details like this, but I think that would be repetitive. If you've watched Yasuke, then you likely already have an idea of where it went wrong, and if you haven't watched it yet, then I'd advise you go and do so yourself. I really don't want to just sit here and make jokes at its expense. I don't like doing that, and I don't want to be known for doing that. I actually had this whole section planned out where I describe how I would rewrite Yasuke's entire first season based on my complaints, and I'll admit I still kind of want to do it, which shows the strength of the premise, but I think that would send off the entirely wrong vibe. The show is here. It's out. You can't retroactively change it, no matter how much copium you huff. So instead, let's try and be a bit more constructive about it. Let's think of something that we, and LaShawn and his team, can learn from Yasuke. And from my point of view, that lesson is curb your ambition relative to your resources. If you've got a plan for a 10 or 12 episode show, but your network is only willing to give you six or even four, then things are going to have to be cut, unfortunately. You can save those ideas for the future in hopes that more episodes get greenlit, but short term, you're going to have to make things work for that format. If you desperately try and cram all your ideas into the small space you have, then none of them are going to come out the other side with the appropriate attention they deserve. Now, I have no idea if this is what happened, and I obviously cannot claim with any degree of certainty what the development of this series looked like. Maybe Netflix was only willing to finance six episodes, or maybe the creative staff genuinely thought it would be enough. But, in any case, they had six episodes to fill, and I think they might have gotten a little too excited with the premise and all the ideas they wanted to put in. And of course, don't mistake what I'm saying as me telling you to play it safe and ignore your big, grand, ambitious ideas. The medium of storytelling evolves through constant boundary pushing and risky reinvention. But, as always, there's a difference between what you want to do and what you are actually able to do. 
There could be a variety of factors, constraints from on high, not having the ability to properly translate idea to script, or sometimes the idea was just never going to work to begin with, but in any case, a writer will probably end up at some point in a situation where they can't use everything they wanted, or things can't go the way they want, so they need to compromise. Reiterating again that I don't speak for the creative team of Yasuke, these first six episodes feel more packed than the first twelve of Castlevania. I think they either wanted all these ideas in there, or felt like they had to include them. Though a sequel is intended, it probably wasn't greenlit at the time, which means they probably felt pressured to end on a somewhat conclusive ending, so perhaps it is understandable why they felt they had to put in as much as they could. But, it's always better to delve deep into a few ideas, than to just skim the surface of many. Regardless, with the first season behind them, and a sequel probably in discussion right now, I hope that LeSean and the team are able to come together, take a look at what worked and what didn't, and come back with something that really lives up to the promise of the premise. Because it is a very interesting and strong premise. If this was just a terrible show with no potential, then I wouldn't have bothered making this video. But it isn't. It's a flawed show, yes, but one I think could really go places. But the ball isn't in my court. Wherever Yasuke ends up, hopefully he gets there with a confident stride, and not a weak stagger. Thank you very much for watching. Again, be sure to check out my Patreon in the description below. You can also follow me on Twitter, and listen to my music on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. I've just released a new EP, be sure to check that out. Otherwise, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.